Welcome my friends, this is Maniacal Incorporated, continuing on with the Tip Volume 2 historically accurate monster playthrough we have drifted a bit away from historical accuracy at the moment as we continue our push into Scotland. In the last episode we seized the lands of Prince Adam. They've given us extensive claims on Scotland. I think we'd be able to take four. We have um, options to take four counties in four separate wars. Uh, the Ducal Conquest would be because we have one county here in Albany. We could actually take Gary for 750 prestige. Uh, 100 prestige to take the two counties to finish off Dolclua, which we might uh, do at some stage. But, the big issue at the moment, poor old Dearmid. Stressed to the gills, severe health penalty. We're going to have to do something about that. As I said at the end of the last episode, we're going to have to call a feast. It's going to basically wipe out what little we have left in finances, but we need it to get the 32 stress down. Sound the horn! And also at the end of the last episode, we ransomed some people out of our court after our war, our second war against Prince Adam. Here is Heilwick von Chile. So we can educate them. Now we're going to give them the diplomacy focus. And like I said, we're actually going to educate them ourselves. We could convert their faith. Let's get an Insularist Bavarian. One Insularist Bavarian. And the other thing that we have is, if we go and look at our court physician, uh, we have an option to put in. She's doing a great job. Uh, she did cure us there after uh, we got wounded. I've married her off to Lued for a while. Uh, because they both have fairly high learning skills. Now, of course, he is learning-based and she is uh, intrigue-based. Didn't, didn't do great. So, yeah, let's, um, unfortunately, appoint Donal or Donald. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna get brought up before the, um, the Labour Commission, aren't we, for, for firing a pregnant woman. You would think it a creature from myth, perhaps a god, or even a pope, disguised in animal form. It was the largest fox I have ever seen. Even after the beast was wounded, the chase lasted half the day. It is still an imposing sight, lying dead before me. So we could get 50 gold. We could make a trophy for our rival. It will be stuffed and sent to the arch abbot. So that would give him plus 30 opinion with us. That would be handy, but you know what? Look, we have to go for the money at the moment. Unfortunately, we have to go for the money. So Geetha has given us a daughter. This is, I believe, our second daughter. We could name her Skahak, Skahak Uvrian. May God grant you long life, my daughter. And we return from the wild. It wasn't the most exciting of hunts. We got some money back to uh, to cover the cost. Uh, we return home invigorated. We gain some extra prestige. What is going on up here? Prince Adam is now facing a peasant uprising. I'd say he should do okay, but his forces are actually still recovering from his attempts to... Uh, overthrow us in the last episode and of course we seized some land off of him and uh, got money off of him when we released him from prison so from what I can see it was indeed a victory for him unfortunately he still hangs around and Mwirin our giant of a wife becomes pregnant just as somebody who has had a troubled relationship with us we were great friends with her father before we got him killed but our steward, who we appointed in the last episode, has gotten us 85 gold. That is absolutely fantastic. Our sister-in-law, Markarthuk's wife, is threatening to leave the court. She's not looking to be in the best of health. 
We married her to a random courtier in the last episode. To try and bring the virile trait to court, I don't think it's working very well. So we could either press her claim to Dalnaradi, which is currently our brother's land. Oh well. Thanks for everything, Pan Ola. All the best. Is this going to turn into a Henry VIII type scenario? We have been given a third daughter, Nula. Is this our second child with Ethelreda? It is indeed. May God grant you long life, my daughter, Nula Uvrian. And there is an alliance from Leinster. He was in a position to do this. If he had proposed this before, we got the claim on Leinster. The problem is we have too much money spent on that claim in Leinster. What age is he? He's 53. He's in fine health. He's a drunkard. We could see peace reign over the island of Ireland. We could see peace reign over the island if we were to accept this. I'm going to accept this alliance. The island of Ireland is now ruled over by three great powers that have for now put their differences aside. I was shocked when I caught Fair Car trying to steal from the travel chest of the visiting Earl Cormac. A Cormac who had a independence faction against us at one stage. So we're telling him that honesty will give him plus two diplomacy and minus four intrigue and we don't want to get ourselves stressed by giving him anything else. Honesty will serve you best in the long run, child. If only your father had listened to lessons like that. We have a diplomacy lifestyle perk. We might be thinking, ah, oh, forced vassalage, and that's going to do great things. How did I not see this? I didn't actually, I didn't actually take a gust. I thought I'd finish this tree off, but I hadn't. So we'd better, <laughs> we'd better take that, get some diplomacy for it. Uh, plus one marshal and some extra prestige. I have no idea how I how I miss this. It kind of lights up weird. But yeah, forced vassalage. Is forced vassalage going to be the next one? I think for now we will continue down this route. But the, uh, the peace that now reigns over the island of Ireland has indeed uh, changed things. Not dramatically, but slightly. We see in the corner that Cormac has been swayed. We're trying to basically just get him a bit happier, the way he abandons a couple of schemes that he has against us. Here we have, in Thuavuan, our wetland farms. Now, I've wanted to increase either them or the harbour. The uh, problem with the harbour is it's 166. It's going to help dev growth, but it's going to be the same tax uh, benefit. So I'm actually going to go with upgrading our wetlands. That's going to knock us down to the best sum of money that you can possibly have. And hopefully that's going to help with uh, with tax for a while. Obviously it's going to it's going to take a while. Adam has been knocked out of any factions, and uh, Cormac's willingness to actually take part in uh, learning crown authority is weakening. We will continue to build our relationship with him. As they say, fourth time lucky. With a tired yet blissful smile, Mwiren presents me with a perfect little son. Who will you become, my child, and what shall I call you? Whale Patrick. Why not? Do we know if he has inherited the giant trait? I'm not too sure if it shows up straight away. We'd probably know he'd be a giant baby. So it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like we've had much success in inheriting any of the traits that we have married people out for. Court Jester. 
Laughter is the best medicine. Have you heard the one about the petty king and the launderer, my lord? It goes like this. My face is flushed and tears of laughter are running down my cheeks. Where does she get all these jokes from? She's hilarious. Perhaps it's time to get back to work, at least I it die from laughter. So we only lose 1% st stress because we're diligent. Fantastic. There's also a 1% chance that we die. Or we could lose 4 stress and go back to work. I wonder what the, the figure was if we weren't diligent. Stress loss is minus 50%, so I wonder would it be 2? There'd be a 1% chance that we die. We, um... We'll take the 4% stress. There has to be an achievement for laughing yourself to death, surely. Petty Queen Mwiren has become pregnant again, just after giving us a son. Uh, Faircar has gained 30 opinion. Somebody else who is pregnant is Kaluk. Actually, she's not pregnant anymore. She has just had a son, I was wondering. Uh, I just saw this a couple of seconds ago. Uh, she's just had a child with her 14-year-old husband. Hmm, oh, I see. Do we actually know who Faradok's father is? No. Well, I was just given out about her, but look what she has done. She has delivered another 85 gold. That's about 170 quid that she's delivered now at this stage. I was waiting, I was waiting. I think we're going to allow the winter snow to melt. I was waiting to get a bit of a war chest together before moving on to the next conquest or to uh, to pushing Dermot's goals of lifting his family's reputation and fame up in the world. I thought we'd be waiting a bit longer, but um, she has done tremendous work for us. Also, we see that that Liberty Faction has disbanded. And we are asked how we intend to rule through loyalty or fear. We could become a generous liege, so taxes will drop. Uh, we could use fear and gain some stress, or we could say that we have somebody more important to impress. How we could impress... Uh, Rory of Connacht. Do you know what? I don't want those taxes to fall. Let's let's impress our new friend. Mwiren. So soon after the birth of our first son. Has given us a second son. Congus. There is Congus's slightly chubbier. But uh, no less gianter. Of a brother. Dermid is going to take a fourth wife, Serla Mach Nicole, or Nyekol. She is quick. So again, trying to get some traits into the family. We're going to send that proposal. Scotland, 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 Scotland. So the Queen has had a son, Donovan. No idea who the father is. What's a bit worrying is that her primary heir is Waldiv of Lothian. So if that happens, uh, we're not going to be in a position to to take any of those lands back. So we have a number of counties here that we want to seize from Flora. So we're going to have to get that process going. We are going to declare war. If we look at the ducal conquest of a county... Like I said, 750 prestige, and we have two counties that we can take, uh, Angus and Gari. Adam's claims, what does Adam have claims for? Okay, so we could get Angus slightly cheaper by 375, so that's something we might actually look at at some stage. Um, not what I wanted to do, however, what we are going to start with is we are going to declare war to seize Lennox right on the borders and part of Dol Clua. Serla agrees to become our wife. 
just as this battle begins, we have a couple of different options. We could try to call in some of our allies. What I think we're going to do is see if we can hold this on our own. Uh, fair car interrupts us. Oh, diligent. Hmm. It's good, but it's causing some trouble for us. We'll, yeah, we leave him with diligent. We're we're in a bit of stress at the moment. We'll see. We're not going to be able to siege that down. So it looks like we are going to put the army under the command of Adam. Seems though it's his area that's being attacked. And we will see if we can uh, hit this army. I'm hoping to do this without actually calling in any allies. But we could call in Leinster. We could call in Leinster for the hell of it. And Adam's forces absolutely tear through Flora's army. Well, there you go. Surely this shows how unfavored by God this adulterous, scone-eating hussy is. She's pregnant again. And in just one fell swoop, four months, we have managed to bring this battle to an end. We will enforce our demands To the heartless petty King Dermot, don't you be giving me that. Our eldest daughter, Fenula, can be educated. She is betrothed to Cayman, or Camoin. He's, he's a bit wake. He's a bit wake. But he has no uh, other brothers to inherit. So it looks like he will become the ruler of man at some stage. So we're going to educate her as a steward. He's being educated as a diplomat. And here is Cajon, our Seneschal. Uh, one of our highest stewardship figures. The mother to uh, Moraid, who we married out to Murdo. I might very well give Murdo some land to try and get that um, Herculean trait into the family. So we're going to send that proposal anyway. I might actually see about giving him one of these regions to see if we can get them to have children to pass on that Herculean trait and get that into the O'Brien family. Then again, we're more than capable of holding a number of counties and it's, it's a lottery at the moment whether we actually pick up any of these traits. Do you know what? I like holding on to them because it's given us it's given us a chunk of money. I did not expect that war to end so quickly, and I think it is only fitting. I think it is only fitting that after that uh, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous achievement. What would we do? The first thing we will do is we will commission an epic. What I need is a classical tale of the grandeur of my family, a chronicle about the origins of the Dalgash. We, we already know this. This was fabricated uh, years ago. And how we are destined to rule Scotland. I only need someone who knows how to tell a story. So we have... Is this, uh, is this him? Arth Goyle? The storyteller composes the epic, so it's going to cost 100, and we have a high chance for an exceptional epic. Uh, my scribes compose the epic. We have an unpredictable chance of an exceptional epic. Uh, surely any lowly servant could do it. We'd lo lose two. Or we could just gain 75 prestige straight off. I will gather some of the best scribes. My scribes have started working on the family epic, but they are already running into trouble. They cannot agree what the story should focus on. As long as it's not more Carthok. Uh, with every scribe, coincidentally, uh, insisting that their own area of responsibility should be the one emphasized. We do not wish to impose, my lord, but you have to settle this before we tear each other to shreds. Focus on stories of my dynasty's ancestral claims. I will gain claims on neighboring titles. That would be fantastic. Uh, it should focus on me and my dynasty, of course. More personal prestige, family history, so we'll get renown or piety. Let's go for the family history. Oh, 
Oh Lord, what have you done? What have you done? My dear uncle, I call you to honor our alliance and join me in the artifact claim war. We will join as a defender. Against who's this? Santa Claus? Oh dear God. What? What is this? We will lose 750 fame. For the want of 750 prestige we will accept, but... Uh, dear God Almighty, what have you dragged us into? I have so many nephews at this stage that I'm confusing myself. I thought this was the Dalnaradi. I thought this was our nephew. It's not our nephew, it's our nephew. So it's Kanuk. They're going to war with Kanuk. Now I'm wondering if that means they're not going to be able to claim the armies in this region. They probably can't uh, declare war on their liege. Uh, we've raised our armies in Dublin. Our only hope is that the English will be hit with some kind of penalty if they disembark and come by sea. And we've rich source material. But they'll be getting rich source material from this anyway. Some of my scribes are telling my vassal, Earl Cormac, about several exciting details they have discovered about my ancestors. Now I believe the part with the river of silver might actually be true since... It is fascinating to be sure, but do they not have a grand chronicle to complete as for the particular anecdote or for, as for this anecdote uh, we could gain some prestige and we will receive a family epic book artifact oh no artifacts are causing a bit of trouble at the moment or we could gain some extra money oh no i i would like that artifact i would like that artifact to impress vassals let's trust that our steward is going to be able to get more gold for us. It should be shared with all my vassals. We will get a family epic book. Let's see if that was a mistake. Word has reached me that a monk renowned for his illuminations is staying in a town in Ross Cray. With my family epic progressing, this might be the ideal time to think about what the pages should look like. Once all is said and done. Ah, graphic designer. Hire the illuminator, whatever the cost. My scribe scan. Do it themselves. Or a learning challenge to do it ourselves. That'd be, that'd be rather interesting. I think the, the scribe scan. We'll get the scribe scan to do it. Reduced chance. Oh, England, you devils, you're destroying my book. Speaking of, my steward, Countess Kaelach, comes to me, excited with news. I, uh, I'd say she's had some news all right over the last while. Uh, she's been reading the latest part of the family epic, and my scribes have discovered something very interesting. So, there is a tall, was never intended to be permanently in the hands of Adam, I, I know that only too well. Uh, we could make a reasonable claim against him. Adam would surely want to formalize the grant. So, we could increase his taxes. Absolutely, he would surely want to formalize the grant. Now, England is coming across. What we're going to do is we're going to withdraw to Dalgash. I'm wondering if we can actually come into this region. We can. The only hope that we have is England coming through bogs. The only hope is that the, they get hit by the bogs. An excellent epic! The Brynanomicon! My scribes have completed my family epic and what a glorious chronicle they have composed. It has high drama, moral quandaries and tense duels. Everything my family has been forged from, is in here, okay. Even the part with the River of Silver, oh yeah. Seemingly so far-fetched, has become a touching moment outlining the destiny of my house. Uh, this might be the greatest chronicle ever written. The... Uh, Koga Goyal Regalov. 
was actually commissioned by Markarthuk in the early, around this time period actually, so Markarthuk was still in power uh, in the late 10, early 1100s. And that was a history of the Viking invasions in Ireland up to uh, the Battle of Clontarf and basically how Brian Boru saved Ireland and Christianity from the Vikings. So we have gotten some family prestige. Uh, we've gotten prestige and we've gotten renown and we have become the holder of the Brynanomicon. This may be the greatest chronicle ever written. We'll need another one after these devils are uh, are dealt with. Our only hope is that they'll suffer some prestige penalties. Or not prestige, but um, penalties to... Oh, okay, it's uh, they've been replaced. That's not too bad. I think they did actually lose some troops. So Edmund has died and his daughter has, um, has replaced him. Arthur has joined with his 400 and something troops. Good man, Arthur. We have inherited at all and two other titles from Adam. Uh, the twist and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage. God knows that I was cursed the day I met Earl Adam. Today, however, the curse has been lifted. What has happened to the devil? Died of natural causes at 40. What a life this man had. A peasant ruler became the... What would you call him? The, um... The king? of Dol Clua wouldn't accept an alliance with a member of our court uh, which would have saved him instead tried to chat up our zero year old baby and trying to stabilize ourselves and our fear against uh, Connacht and their, their strong powers in the north of England we Decided that uh, his lands should be ours. He has now died and everything has come over to us. And uh, yeah, we're in a position where we're going to have to give out some land to some vassals. Not a day too soon. We lose seven stress. Uh, it's something. We gain a uh, fish to money as well, which is also uh, not too shabby. We're in a position to get a new lifestyle perk. The problem is that our money is going to get eaten up quickly. Our money is going to get eaten up quickly by the fact that we have our full army standing and not exactly a, a whole lot happening at the moment. We can't really stand it down because it'll take three months to come back. And Brian, Mordecai's son, our trusted commander, and I have no doubt he was in, in command of this army, either himself or Adam was in command of the army. Brian has passed away from old age at 60. We'll start with our diplomacy lifestyle perk. We could very well, we could very well actually push in this direction. And try and go down Patriarch for now. I think what we will do is we will finish off. See, embassies would be great as well. Alliances would grant us extra diplomacy. Uh, we'd get an extra Alliance, independent ruler opinion plus 15 fellow vassals is not much good to us. Uh, the forced vassalization causes Belli on neighboring rulers. We don't have a lot of counties around us at the moment. And we have adaptive traditions, which isn't of tremendous value to us. I think we might take the befriend scheme. We have few enough good figures to replace Brian, but it looks like the best is his son, Murica. So we're going to assign him. I have just seen Cormac. Uh, Cormac is a 20 in diplomacy. So let's uh, stick Cormac in as our diplomat. Olaf is not going to be the happiest. And we have strong vassals then in the other positions. Uh, there's not a huge lot we can do here at the moment. There's not a huge lot we can do here at the moment. Well, there you go. That's an interesting development. Ana of Leinster has died. He has drank himself to death. And that leaves us now in a position where we can resume our push into Leinster, should we so wish. Uh, Fair car. 
is approaching adulthood, we could get a weak hook on him. I think that we will tell him we'll become his friend. It is what a guardian is meant to do. We are known for our dedication to faith. I'm not seeing uh, much of a an attrition loss on the forces of England. They are pushing in very, very slowly, however. Our court jester is getting into a food fight. My liege, I know something that will cheer you up. Watch closely as I sneak up on my prey. What is she up to? Hungry? She screams, hurling a pomegranate cake in the face of my friend, Ewa. What a priceless expression. Oh, and Ewa seems to have taken it somewhat fine. Oh, joy, what fun. Such a classic jest. We lose 11. Um, We lose 4. Or we gain 40. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that 11. We'll take that handy 11. And actually, something I forgot to do. That we are in a position to attach the Brynanomicon. And here we are suffering another mental break. I don't think there's going to be anything that we can do to stop ourselves from becoming reclusive. After all those years fighting against Leinster, after all those years condemning those Catholics, I think Dearman is going to make an ever so slight change. Now, what's going to be interesting here is because of what Mandate has done, by removing polygamy from the traditions and making polygamy part of the the religion again. So the way that the base game had handled it, I thought was brilliant. It didn't matter whether insular Christianity was polygamous or not, but having polygamy as the tradition, because again, we know historically the Irish were Roman Catholic. Insular Christianity is just a descriptor that's used for a number of uh, interesting things about how Christianity was practiced in Ireland up until about the seven or eight hundreds. The dating of Easter is gone. The... what else is gone? Well, Tonsure, we're not really too sure if that's around, but that's not exactly something that can be replicated in the game. So the way that the base game had this represented, I thought was very good. Having the... the Irish being culturally polygamous, because again, it's basically maintained by Brehan Law. Let's see what happens. I have a feeling that we're going to lose a lot of wives. There you go. Oh lord, a ton of things has, has just happened. So we have a new bishop. Which is something I actually forgot about, I suppose. I didn't think that was going to happen as well. Um, we're now in a position, the worst thing is that I, I, I knew we could have changed our wives, but I kept Ethelreda because we needed to maintain that alliance with Waldiv of Dunbar. And this is actually maybe a bit helpful because, of course, her successor is now her husband, who just so happens to be the young King Malcolm of Lothian. Oh, devil. Well, there you go. That's our that's our alliance to Lothian doubly gone. So our acquaintance Lothian, or our, our acquaintance... Um, Waldiv has died from complications due to flagellation. He should have he should have asked us for some tips. We've done it twice now at this stage and we haven't managed to kill ourselves. See if Connacht would follow us. If Connacht would follow us and actually uh, attack them. Now Connacht might be going around the other side. Uh, here we have Yes, we've gotten that Herculean trait. I was thinking of making Mordo a, um, a ruler somewhere to see if we could get that uh, that trait into the family somehow. But uh, Imeg has gotten that Herculean trait at birth. So that's handy. Are they going to try and siege back the lands of the Thal... Naradi? They are indeed. Here's a misunderstanding. Earl Cormac. I received a letter which makes it clear that he thinks I have been pursuing a different goal entirely. 
I'm your vassal, for God's sake. So it's been a, it's been a misunderstanding, and our scheme to sway him has ended. We have access to a new Dalgash legacy. We went the last time with House of Warriors for the extra prowess for the wars that we'd be fighting and the knight effectiveness. We could, considering that we are uh, still fighting a lot of wars, continue down the pursuit efficiency. We've just been complaining about the chances of inheriting good traits or new traits. I am looking also at this, however. Uh, hunt and fair costs would go down 30%. That would be handy for the man that we have at the moment. I think we will go for the hunt and feast cost reduced by 30%. It breaks my heart a bit. I would like to have gone down the, uh, the blood line. What I'm trying to do at the moment is get my army into Meath. We're going to see what... Um, what these guys are doing. Let's see where they push afterwards. So after they take Brefni, let's see what direction they're going to push in. Here is poor Ewa, our friend, whose friendship we saved by converting to Catholicism. We lose another 14 stress. We are actually getting close to, um, to bringing ourselves down below that depressed level. They're heading in our direction, I would say. They're heading for Connacht. I think they're going to hit Connacht. I don't think there's anything that's going to stop them. That's the problem. Our army is being divided. They've actually marched in a very, a very intelligent direction. Let's see if we can... Connacht is deciding to give them battle in a very bad position. Uh, Fair Car's education has ended. He has become... Let's see what kind of a diplomat he has become. Until we meet again, Fair Car. Not too shabby. That's a hefty, hefty defeat for Connacht. They still have 7,500 troops. Iceland is wandering around. Iceland has attacked... I'm not too sure where the hell it's after going for. Arguilla, by the looks of it. Hmm. I don't remember my... Thoughtful gesture being this girthy. My lord, excuse me. You see, I've had a bit too much to eat, and it would seem my stomach does not agree with me. Eilish says a pained look on her face. Fart. Suddenly, Eilish's colorful coat bursts open, uncovering a goose. And another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. Oh, what a spectacle! There's people dying in a war at the moment. It has knocked out all of our... All of our stress. I have an idea. There's a scheme at court. Somebody is plotting to kill our courtier, Cajon. So we've exposed that scheme. Look, we're off. We're off. We're, ju we're just leaving. Connacht's getting itself into bad situations. England's coming back for Brefni. There's nothing that can stop them. There's nothing that can stop them. There's Iceland wandering around. Connacht is going back out to sea. Could go for the lands of the Dalfiathuk. But yeah, no. We're sick of all this. They are going for the lands of the Dalfiathuk. Ha 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 ha. We've told everyone that we're not taking part in the war. We are taking part in the war. I hope I'm sieging down the right place. It looks like it. There's no point. There's no point in trying to fight the English on Irish soil. You take the war to the English. That's how you deal with the English. We have another lifestyle perk. Uh, each friend adds minus 5% stress gain. So we... We gain less stress. I'd say we're going to go for that route. Uh, we're going to start trying to make friends in a minute once we have this war over and done with. Oh, 37 quid and a small baby. Oh, boys. It's going to be a good night out at the pub tonight. As we move on, we've received some bad news. One of our knights has died from cancer. A uh, very high-ranking, very high-ranking knight who was married to a uh, one of the former wives of 
the uh, the High King. Olaf has died. Our friend Olaf has died, and we have gained stress as a result of that. We're actually making great headway with these sieges, but uh, I have a feeling that uh, England is doing just as good, and they're on the uh, the outskirts of Connacht. If um, if this fool would try to actually push for a peace treaty, it'd be tremendous. Well, do you know what? I don't care. I'm just I'm just going to keep sieging places down. I don't care. Heilvik van Chile has been impressed with one of the household knights for a very long time. I hope it wasn't um, uh, Higgins. After finally meeting him in person, she has been repeating the warrior's words to herself so she could keep that diligent trait, which is what we will do. I have a feeling they're going to march on Connacht next once they uh, complete the siege that they're doing there. Then again, Connacht is just following in behind them and sieging everything down, have they realised, oh no, the Irish have hit England? If they... No, they're heading for Dublin. Oh no, they're heading for our land. They realised my fantastic plot. Uh, Connacht is going to go and start sieging down, sieging back some places. The more Vikings have landed. Uh, Thaig has died. Thaig drank himself to death, a member of the family. Thaig... And we see a faction being created. And we get another 8 quid. Oh no. Oh no. No, stop. No, stop it. Now is not a good time. So Flora of Scotland is dead, which means that... Waldiv, who split off from Scotland... He failed in his goal of becoming king, but uh, his son, Flora's husband, has now indeed become the uh, the king of Scotland, from what I can gather. Died of an unknown affliction, trying to cure herself while in childbirth. And so there you go, Malcolm the Fourth of Scotland. The son of our former ally, Waldiv. Our, so this is our uh, wife's nephew. Uh, we could possibly negotiate an alliance. We actually could. But uh, that's our plans to expand into Scotland. Kind of messed up now a bit at the moment. So they're juggling, masterful juggling. Setting off fireworks on the day that the Queen dies. Oh, how the days drag on. The same old motions. The same old wars. Come to the Grand Hall, my liege. You must see this. A servant suddenly exclaims as I arrive to see my jester. Ailish in the middle of the room, masterfully juggling. An animal skin. My coronation crown. A bottle of Bordeaux Chalet. Or Charlet. Wine. Drink. Booze. Little Imag. A chicken and an apple. All the servants are staring in awe. So am I. So we can lose 21 stress or send her to the dungeon. On what grounds? Uh, we'd gain stress for no apparent reason. But there you go. Now that's something you don't see every day, thankfully. Damn it, Scotland. While we are here, we're given an option again to increase our opinion with Rory, who has dragged us into a war that is seeing our lands being sieged at the moment in times of crisis, a slow response. Our half-hearted effort can lead to disaster, so we're going to see our rents decrease by 5%, which is not something that I want. I think it's, well... The problem is that we are seeing some vassals forming factions against us, so I think what we will do is try and do that... Uh, we can see Earl Ochmoroin Mach Olaf has formed an independence faction against us. How's everything going over here? They're close actually to seizing Meath and Dublin. We're seeing Brefni being sieged down. Lads, you can seize my places, but nobody cares. Like, that's not actually going to do anything. So there you go, we're at plus 16% now. Our army is slowly being whittled away. What the hell is this? That's not my bishop. Oh, it is my bishop. In the evening, Bishop, bishop Gilla Comon sits in a dimly lit council room. I miss Lueth. His gaze and quill are focused upon 
inconspicuous expense reports yet beside him lay clay models with the royal stamp, which would only be needed if he intended to defraud the realm. To think that a man of his position, these Catholics, to think that he would dare act so disgracefully, under the eyes of God, disgracefully, but skillfully had I not caught him in the act, nobody would have been the wiser to his scheme. So we could publicly shame him and get stressed because we're just and temperate. Teach me to forge the documents. We would gain a bit of stress. He'd gain 15 gold. And we would gain 300 intrigue lifestyle experience. Get a weak hook on him. Those funds are meant for me. Right. We would gain 35 because we are just. And we would gain 50. Incompetent tax, tax collection for 15 years. What's this? I've seen enough. To the dungeons. Ah. Oh. Divils the lot of you. We're at 115. We'll gain what? See, we could do... We really, we really could do with that uh, that 50 gold. No. Do you know what? We're sieging down a place that there's actually uh, better stuff at the moment. Um... Sure, some intrigue lifestyle experience. Because I did start checking around. There's 32 gold there. There's 28 there. There's 8 there. Well, if we can take a couple of places, we'll be doing fine. Our friend Yua has died. Oh, Lord. The obnoxious spawn of hell, Gilicomon, makes my blood boil. How could God see fit to curse the earth with Gilicomon's two-faced wickedness? No, it's obvious. He is Satan's kin. He is worse than both putrid boil and ravenous locust. I cannot stand the mere thought of breathing the same evil air as him. I must do something about it. I must act. My sanity depends on it. So he's going to become our rival. Uh, we will gain Driven by Vengeance for 10 years. Can't imagine that's going to do great for our standing with the priest. If somebody would just declare war on England right now, that would be fantastic. We have another thousand troops that we have managed to raise. Uh, do we have any other siege engineers? No, that's not great. I thought we had another, I thought we might have another siege engineer, but it does not look like it. We're going to have to send them out to sea as well, uh, to see what they can see. And what we're predominantly looking for is where's, where's the best pla places to siege down? Do you know what? Yeah, I think if we can get you to here and start in that location. Uh, so that's going to knock off 11. We're going to see these two places lost. Who knows what kind of losses we're going to suffer after that happens, but, um... Hopefully we're going to see Connacht raise one of the sieges. So that's 50% now. Connacht is going in against the Vikings. They're taking a bit of a baiting. That's the only problem. They're taking a substantial baiting. Here is Earl Cormac. I never expected I would grow as close to Earl Cormac as I've done in the past few years. So yeah, let's, uh, let's become friends with him. Uh, so rare to find a true friend. And we have indeed lost control of... Uh, my holdings are now occupied, but it's not its not impacting... Obviously, it's not great to lose Dublin, but uh, it's not impacting the war effort in any way, make, shape, or form. Is Connacht on the verge of being wiped out? So what have we? We have the learning... Or she could become generous if we stress ourselves out. We're not in a position to do that right now. Connacht is getting torn apart, from what I can understand. No, they've they've managed to lift that siege. And England is just going back to sieging down all these places that it has done before. Uh, Ban Rodovan? No! Not Ban Rodovan. Oh god, no, not Ban Rodovan. Our counselor, Kaelach, has died. Ban Rodovan has indeed joined Kaelach of uh, Meath, has died in childbirth. So this would have been the only actual legitimate member of the house, if I am correct. Uh, no, 
they actually had um, had a legitimate child beforehand. However, the title has passed to her eldest illegitimate child, who is in, I imagine, in the English uh, prisons. Actually, if, if they're over here, we might just go and, and search for them. Uh, Ban Rodovan, the devil, has joined. We'll find where his court is and we'll sail our troops out there. Uh, we've landed in Cornwall. We're sieging down Essex very slowly. We don't have the uh, the forces that are able to do it. Uh, we're at 80%. We're at another lifestyle perk. Our great steward, our great steward is gone. In fairness to her, she was something else. Here is a mayor in our Scottish territories. 16%. Glunirn, 16%. That's all that's left. And now you join. Thanks. Good man. Thanks. Considering the age of the king, I'm not too sure which of these is actually going to be of use. It's entirely possible that we're not going to be able to achieve any of our, our future goals as a result of, of what's going on. I think we will... I think we'll take this. We can propose an alliance without a marriage. Because once this war comes to an end, if we can... Uh, once this war comes to an end, Leinster is our, our next target. We're being told that we don't have a great ability to siege down this area. I don't want them to lose a ton of, of um, people. So let's just take a look at what level this uh, fort is. We're probably seeing a lot of high-level forts down in this region. So we can take that one. I don't necessarily want to put them out to sea. We leave them there for a short while and see. we'll see what uh, what that can do. Connacht has managed to lift that siege. This was a 9,000-man army at one stage. This was a 9,000-man army at one stage. And where is Ban Rodovan? Where is he, the devil? Come out and fight me. We're seeing a ton of Welsh troops have just raised up. We're seeing that one of, I think that's Scahawk's army, is marching south after being defeated. I'm not too sure what's after happening. My best friend, this will be our sister Alva, who's married in Connacht, does not need to knock on the door to enter my chambers. Ah, her joyous smile will never cease to delight me, but there's something different about her today. Her hair is perfectly done and her clothes are as opulent as elegant. Dermot, my dearest friend, a castle this big, and you're here all by yourself. Well, all the everyone else has been shipped out to England to fight the English. There's nothing I would enjoy more than your precious company, and if I could, oh goodness, if I could, I'd spend all my days and nights with you in this very room. This, this is our sister, isn't it? It is indeed. And there is only one bed. Catholicism, lads. Not even, not even once. We lose 14 stress. Uh, I shall find an accommodation worthy of you. Uh, Cajon, our Seneschal has died. We're at 100%. Alva. Get back on whatever horse brought you to this court. Get to your husband now and tell him to bring this war to an end. Well, they managed to siege down a territory before we could bring the war to an end. Or before anyone could bring the war to an end. We have moved in. Oh. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. England is moving out to sea. If Connacht can get in quickly and siege those areas. The people's priest, not a day passes by without Bishop Gillicomon making a mockery of me during his sermons. That obsessed churl is certain that I'm an agent of Satan. I'm certain he's an agent of Satan. So we could donate some money. I'm sure he'd like some money. We could spend 75 prestige and lose control. I will not tolerate insubordination from my own vassals. We'll spend 50 piety and gain some dread. Uh, we're pulling one of our two armies out. I'm going to see where they're actually going to go. Are they going to go all the ways around? They are. Connacht is getting that army in slowly. What I was thinking that we might be able to do... Oh, they're heading, they're heading back. They're heading back. Excellent, excellent. This might, this might work out very well. Uh, what I thought we would do is if they attacked the largest of the two forces, if we were there to hit them, 
when they landed with that disembarkation penalty. I don't think that's going to happen now, though. Which might as well get you to land there. Looks like they're going to head back up, and I don't think Connacht is going to be able to siege that down before they land. And indeed, it's probably actually going to be a battle. Connacht is trying to get its forces out. Connacht and uh, Kilcud Bright. Are the English going to chase them down? They are indeed. So it's going to be another battle against Connacht. And if Connacht uh, loses, which I expect that they will. You look tired, my lord. I am very tired. Hey, Leash. I know the cure for that. It's called East of Indus. So we can lose 21 stress or lose 11 and form a friendship with her. I think we'll lose that 21. Now, if Connacht can just hold on, it is it is taking uh, fantastic numbers. It's it's kicking fantastic numbers out of the English. Uh, our army here is being decimated. God only knows what actual battles are going on in this region. Uh, Connacht has suffered a loss. Uh, England is down to 5,000 and something troops. I think they're following across into uh, Kilcudbright. They could be marching south to uh, to attack us where, where we are. We're suffering a second, third, fourth, fifth mental break. Again, we could become reclusive or we will... We will um, flagellate ourselves. They are indeed coming across. And I imagine they're going to continue down. Unless they're going to start attacking... If they siege places here, oh, that could be fantastic. So England is down to about five or so thousand troops. Never mind, there are 10,000. That's with your man's army, but he hasn't shown up yet. Uh, we're actually equaling out those numbers fairly well. There was a commotion among the children today. Ortholuk was attempting to preach among his fellow youngsters and became a target for a small fight. Skahuk, who we are raising... Uh, managed to stop the fight so they could become calm. There's a bit of a diplomacy gain there, so we will tell her that being calm is tremendously important. Being calm at a time like this is tremendously important. If Connacht could lift the siege here in Arguilla, and if we could continue sieging places, do we want to go to Huntingdon? It's a fiver. It was 24 quid. What do you have? 19... We'll go for the 19 first of all, strangely enough. I'm hoping... I'm thinking of actually changing across the... Um... Nah, there's no point at this stage. I was going to put our... Oh, lads. A. What the hell is Connacht doing? With the Godwin Dynasty ban, I don't even... I don't even want to know. How much of that... Rory, how much of that am I getting? Rory... Rory, how much am I of that am I getting? How much am I getting? Great. Why am I only getting 84%? What did anyone else do? What did anyone else do? You'd better stay over there. Do you see this bit that's lit up? You'd better stay over there in future. It was your father that came across, and now look where he is. Dead. Go away from me. Hells, bells, look at the job that we have to do. We will we'll start here in Desvuen trying to restore control. That's going to take two years. We're going to have to appoint a new Seneschal to uh, to help with that with that process. Uh, Morid, distant member of the family. Is this Morid's husband? It is indeed. So she's good, however. He's only average. So we'll put, uh, we'll put Morid in as our Seneschal to help with that process. In our prisons, we have a baby. We have the son. He's one of the heirs, or he's heir to some of the stuff that his mother has. The Queen of England can't get no money because she bankrupted herself. And then we have this lad. He's actually a very good knight in terms of his prowess. He is married to the 56-year-old Thane of Tintagel. 
do you know what? Could we... We'll get 15 quid. That's that's it. That's If we ransom him, we'll get 15 quid. Will we ransom him? Or will we keep him as a knight? Oh, Lord. Constantine has come of age. We're going to have to recruit some knights, aren't we? And we don't have the money for it. You're going into the army, you devil. Well, hell. Did that take a while? Connacht had better be very thankful for the service that we lent to them, dropping our special forces, paratrooping them, into the south of England. And the, the east of England, and the west of England. We managed to cause enough damage over there that... We were losing money hand over fist, but we haven't actually lost all that much. The kingdom has changed utterly in the in the length of time it took for that war to come to an end very quickly. Before I end today's episode, I'll have to do it. I will have to do it. Open inventory. Uh, court artifacts. Godwin dynasty. History. When the hell did you siege London? Well, there you go. It was taken in 1101 um, by Rory the First. I suppose in some of the anarchy, he would have been called in to fight on his daughter-in-law's side in some war, in one of those liberty wars. So they managed to take the Godwin dynasty banner, and now England wants it back, but I don't know if they actually still have a have a claim to it. Uh, doesn't look like it, so a couple of pe uh, people in England do, but most of the English have now lost the claim to the Godwin Dynasty banner, which is just going to hang in Connacht. Well, if I ever form the Kingdom of Ireland, you're giving me that goddamn banner. Leinster, we've lost our alliance to Leinster. We're going to war with Leinster in the next episode, once we get the army back together, once we get the finances back together. Thank you for helping me defend the artifact in this episode, and I hope you will help me defend more artifacts in the next one.